All right. What's going on? I got a couple of reads here before we start the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast, where I just check in on you. Um, and then I, I do an interview, so I don't want to interrupt the interview. All right. I'm basically becoming Charlie Rose. All right. Quip, everybody. The truth is most of, most of us are brushing our teeth wrong. What? What do you mean? Not for long enough and forget to change our brush on time, that's because most brands focus on selling flashy gimmicks rather than better brushing, but not Quip. So, hey man, what makes Quip so different, man? Well, for starters, Quip is an electric toothbrush that's a fraction of the cost of bulkier brushes while still packing just the right amount of vibrations to help clean your teeth. Ladies, keep it clean. Quip built... Quip's built-in, ah, Jesus, the text messages here. Quip built, Quip's built-in timer, fuck, helps you clean for the dentist's recommended two minutes with guided pulses that remind you when to switch sides. Next, <laughs> I got to get one of these. How does it remind you? All right, party. Uh, next, Quip subscription plans are for your health. Not just convenience. They deliver new brush heads on a dentist-recommended schedule every three months for just $5, including free shipping worldwide. Quip also comes with a mount that suctions right to your mirror and unsticks to use as a cover for hygienic travel wherever you take your teeth. Oh, yeah, you got to cover your brush. Jesus. And finally, everyone loves Quip. They were named on Oprah's O-list. I love this toothbrush! Named one of Time's best inventions and is the first subscription electric toothbrush accepted by the American Dental Association, not the United Kingdom Dental Association. That's huge. Anybody can get their recommendation because evidently they're asleep at the wheel. But the American Dental Association. Plus, they're, they back, they're, they're backed by a network of over 20,000 dentists and hygienists and hundreds of thousands of happy brushers uh, use Quip every day. Quip starts at just 25 bucks, And if you go to getquip.com, G-E-T-Q-U-I-P.com slash Burr, B-U-R-R, right now, R-I-G-H-T, fucking with you, you'll get your first refill pack for free with a Quip electric toothbrush. That's your first refill pack for free, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. At getquip.com slash burr, spelled G E T Q U I P dot com slash burr. And uh, lastly, but certainly not leastly, GoDaddy. GoDaddy is the world's largest tech- technologic- technology platform. God, I'm stupid. For small business. So she, for small businesses? What's the plural of business? Businesses. I started a couple of businesses. You'd never get a second date. You got to say, I'm an entrepreneur. You can't look, sit across there with spaghetti hanging on your mouth going, I, well, what have I been doing since high school? Well, I started a couple of small businesses. Uh, they help regular people get their businesses running and thriving with just about everything you need to make an, an idea real. These days, that means do-it-yourself websites. I can't believe I figured out DIY. Email, social tools, and even a business phone app for your Apple or Android made just for small businesses. Check them out. They'll do right by you. Well, there's no links or anything? He said, I emailed you too. This is a two-parter, everybody. All right, here we go. Where's the rest of this? Oh, that's it. They'll do right by you. Oh, yeah, GoDaddy. GoDaddy GoDaddy.com. GoDaddy. You can do it, buddy. Um, all right, that's it. Now, why don't we listen to uh, the interview here with the one and only Danica Patrick? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday uh, Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. And I'm just checking in on you. Whose phone is that? Is that my phone? 
Um, believe it or not, I am at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway here in, uh, what is it, Bloomington? No, Indianapolis, Indiana. And, Speedway, uh, Indiana. S- Speedway, Indiana. <laughs> and I have a very special guest, a lovely lady coming to the podcast, the one and only Danica Patrick. Thanks. What's going on? You know, just uh, taking in the sights and sounds. Hey, I used to work in a dental office with my dad, by the yeah. way. Lovely dentition. Oh. Right out of the gate. Fantastic. <laughs> I don't know why. I've been doing the Thank Invisalign, you. by the way, which I think is a, uh, it's a great thing. Kind of straightened out my teeth down on the bottom. Yeah. But they make it seem like they're like, hey, you, you're just going to wear it for like three months. And then you have like this night guard thing. And I'm finding that it isn't. You kind of have to wear these things for the rest of time or else you go right back to having like snaggle teeth so it's kind of annoying so they basically get you they're like you get so happy with your new smile and then they lock you in because they're like you're on the hook well it must be your fault that your teeth don't stay like this guess you're gonna have to wear them forever yeah and they're gonna and then i'm gonna owe this guy money 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 the whole time i i, I should have known i i screwed up so anyways it's a I good did. thing you have probably some what straight money. teeth <laughs> oh money I got a little bit of money. I go out there. I tell my shit jokes or whatever. <laughs> we just went around the track in a, uh, I was saying, this 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 Camaro, the color of my pubes. <laughs> it was a little wimpy that it was a uh, 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 a uh, convertible. You know, did you feel like that was slowing you would down? Would you have rather put the top down? Should we have Oh, that would that? be great. We could put on some jewel, you know? Yeah, the, the <laughs> Sarah McLaughlin and just roll around Indy <laughs> doing, you know, 40 miles an hour. Yeah, I've done that one other time. And I was really nervous with the other person. But you have like this steely calm where you were cruising around. You just sort of like, you know, I'm trying to make my stupid, you know, you know, I'm a dancing monkey. I'm trying to make my clown jokes. And you're just looking over like, Was it distracting? What? Was like riding distracting as in you were mm, sort of finding yourself like feeling and seeing and anticipating and getting nervous at any point? Or were you just like rolling? Like There was a couple of times you came close to the wall Mm -hmm. and I was feeling my face getting pulled in (laughs) towards the wall that I was kind of like, all right. I just kept thinking, you know, she's done this a zillion times and she has to work on Sunday. So she doesn't want to wreck this thing. And then I was, of course, also thinking there's really no roll bar. This is just sort of a... Very or fa- helmet. Yeah, very fancy or rental very car. very high-quality seatbelts. Hey, how come in IndyCar, like I noticed this year in, in, in uh, Formula One, they have that ridiculous thing that's now – it looks like it's in their, in their line of sight, um, that little halo thing that they have going they're around there. They're testing it. Yeah, they're testing the halo. Just, you know, uh, being exposed is dangerous, right? So right. there you know, there have been drivers killed through um, – things hitting them um yeah so, there's a crash in parts of the car yeah you never so, think yeah. that you think oh i got a helmet actually on. the cars have a little wicker on the um um front of the cockpit where mm-hmm. it opens up right in front of the steering wheel obviously you have to be able to get in um so it's clear it's like a plexiglass piece um <clears throat> and that's what i'm looking through basically when i'm looking down the front straightaway um looking at cars just before i get into the corner i'd say i maybe look a little past it to the to the left when i'm when i'm getting into the corner but for the most part, I'm looking through it, and that that thing gets so many like chips and bugs and all kinds right. of stuff. Like I feel like I'm, you know, drunk by the end. I'm like I can't see what's going <laughs> on. What's the scariest thing? Like accent you've been in, and like you must have, at this point, as long as you've been doing it, had like a wheel or like I would just think of a, a lug nut going, you know, two thousand, well, mm. two hundred miles an hour mm. coming at you. I mean, that's got to be terrifying. Um, let's see. Uh, my first accident in an Indy car was really big. Um, I ended up going in an ambulance to the hospital, like, you know, full speed. And I kept asking the nurses how, if it looked bad. Apparently I was obsessed with the idea of like, I'm, a, I'm alive, but it looked really gruesome. Cool. Yeah. And they they reminded <laughs> me that I had asked them three times now. And so I didn't realize that cause I was being oh, a little concussed. forgetful. So and what, so when I, you said, did it, did it look bad? You're saying like, did you look bad? Like, are you all No, did up? the accident look bad? Like, what's happened to the car? Did it look, like, catastrophic? Was it exciting? Was it, you know, did it look did bad? Did put on a good like, show? are you shocked I'm here? You know what I realized when, when I came here? I went to this race in 95 and 96, I was telling you. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to lie. You want to see an accident. You want to see it. You probably, mm-hmm. it's probably really annoying. That's like uh, somebody going to a comedy club and wanting to see somebody bomb. But uh, what you don't realize is you think you want it to be right in front of you because you're not thinking of the physics. That, like, I saw a guy hit the wall right in front of me just you know, with his tires. 
but it's just like he hit it there and, and all the all the action was like immediately a quarter mile <laughs> down the track so you want it to to happen like a half mile up the track or however, however far if you're really going to see all the uh all of the action i feel bad saying that to you but i did you, I mean, you want to see an amazing race. You want to see some when passing. When I'm watching a race, want I want to s- see accidents, too. It's yeah. exciting. Um, you know, it's... Uh, That's why I used to watch Chips back in the day. It wasn't for the banter between Ponch and John. It was for, like, the, uh, that giant pileup. I'm probably dating myself. You probably don't even remember that show. I think that show came out probably before you were born. I, I, it is a little too old, but I have heard of it. You know what's great about that is they'd always have, like, these freeway pileups. And th- that would go on for like a minute. And then in the end, there was always the guy that somehow got air and went over the top of it. And if you listen to the sound effects, he was still on the gas pedal, which was <laughs> the funniest. You'd think he'd hit the brakes at that point. In the air? Yeah, he was really? in the air. You know what I had to end up learning with um, stock car racing because I did that for seven years was that the best thing to do if you were about to, if you were spinning out or anything was happening was just mat it. Keep the wheels straight and keep it floored. Is that what mad it means? Oh, mad it. Put it down to the put floor. Put it down. Pedal to the metal. Yeah. What is that like when you're driving that fast? Everybody's spinning out. All you see is smoke, and you just hope you're hitting the hole? Yeah. I mean, it's like poke and hope. You know, you're just hoping that they clear <laughs> they clear away in the right. They're like, you know, when, they, when cars crash, especially stock cars, and when there's lots of them, because um, the, the pileups in stock car racing – tend to be a little bit bigger than an indie car racing mm-hmm. uh, but e- but either way generally the cars you don't know where they're gonna go they're like footballs bouncing you throw it and it hits the ground and you're like god which way is it gonna right. go that's how it feels when you're like trying to decide where to go based on the car like there was a car that crashed in front of me in practice and it hit the right outside wall on the right and then i wasn't sure if it was like gonna cut across the track somehow right in front of me so i just kind of waited 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 and then as soon as you think you're clear you just gun it and you just get by them as oh quickly my God. as you can now if they had you mic'd up if i heard you on tv are you just, are you just going fuck actually shit, that's shit, 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 shit. exactly what i'm thinking before anything <laughs> happens is <laughs> it is it is hey so uh What's the most – I'm going to just jump around here as far as like – I know you probably got a lot of shit for being a woman, you know, in this – you know, this is the guys – was, was stock car, was they um, – I'm just picturing them being more sexist because I'm a northerner probably. Yeah. Like when you showed up where they were like, what are you going to do here, darling? You going to ride around in the pace car? Did you get a lot of that? I did get people that said to me like, how are you going to handle these big cars, you know? And I'm like, a lot easier because they have power steering. <laughs> Yeah, plus you're, they're hot, but they're not harder to drive physically. They're much less physical to drive. Was it like one of those Hollywood movies? Did some guy like say a bunch of sexist stuff to you, and then you beat him, and then in the end he had to walk up and be like, you "If know someone what? said a bunch of sexist I stuff to me, I think you're all right." I would beat him. You would in some way, maybe verbally, but <laughs> probably start verbally, and then I don't think it would escalate to anything physical. But I would verbally abuse them. Now, did that ever happen? Maybe. I don't want you to name names. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about... Do you remember a quote? No, I'm just kidding. Do you remember a quote? What's, what's, what did you, what did well, you say? Well, I do to... remember there was a quote a long time back from... Uh, you've got an F1 hat on. Um, Bernie Ecclestone said that women should be wearing like white like appliances and be in the kitchen or something like that. Oh, he said that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how stupid. <laughs> I wonder oh, if he's happily married. That's kind of funny. It's always I think all that stuff's funny because then it, but what it does is it Again, creates, I take it it creates it as a drama. Assault. It take, or, creates you know, drama. Then you go out and you beat the person, and you prove them wrong. Right. I don't really take it that personally. I, I just don't. It's interesting. It creates some drama and some right. something to talk about. But I I don't take it personally. So now you're gonna uh, and I'm really jealous about this. Is you're gonna retire? I think yes. that's awesome. Yes. I know. I like, think it's awesome too. I'm super excited. I'm like. You know, I there. I don't know how it feels for you when you walk out on stage, or before you do this with me, or I don't know how you feel when you interview somebody, but like I'm just excited to be gone from that stress. Like right. I, I, I'm excited to have. I'm, ex, I'm excited for less polarizing sort of emotions of, you know, so so happy and so so scared or so mad or so sad yeah but you can die doing what you do like mm-hmm. my job is the most fun job ever it's just getting there because all i think is if i retired i would be i would never go to lax ever again and that's amazing right i would never have to connect <laughs> through heathrow which is one of the worst experiences i ever had i had to get off 
go get my bag that I checked, and then like get on a bus. There was like three forms of transportation to get to a whole the whole other side of the airport. And I just ever since then I was just like I'm never. Why do they kiss? Why do they kiss? We're standing. We're right on the finish line. There's these tourists. They're kissing. That's the thing you do after you win the race is kiss the bricks. Oh, you do. Yeah. I, I don't. You know, everybody's looking at it. And then watch. He's going to walk across it. You know, he went to the men's room today. Oh, people autograph it, too. They're probably autographing it right now. Oh, you can sign it? I guess. You guys just wear it off after like three laps? Yeah, really. <laughs> and they leave with the dream that it's still there? <laughs> Someday, if you ever go to that race, you're going to see my name right down there. Um, so, yeah. Danica, she ran over my name. How often do you, like, beat yourself up after races? Or would you, I should say? Yeah, every one of them, for the most part. Yeah. I mean, you're always thinking about what you could have done better. I feel like that's the nature of a competitive mind, of someone very driven. Like, I'm not just... What's What's the worst as far as, like, as far as racing goes? I would think you're leading with, like, two laps to go, and then somebody gets around you. You run out of gas. Running out of gas is not your fault, really. So I would say that's the lesser of them, unless they told you to Where does the fuel gas guy didn't. go? When you run out of gas, does he just leave the whole thing? <laughs> does he immediately get fired? I mean, I feel like I if could do that job. If he's short-fueled and, you know, pulled the, pulled the fuel, fueling hose out too soon and didn't get it full, something like that, it would be him. Now, if it was your engineers not putting enough in or not taking into account what was going on and not telling you to save more, then it was them. If they told you to save fuel and you didn't, then it was you. So oh, it wow. could be a series of... of I'm of, starting of, to understand of, what oh, after the race is like. It's like, all right, yeah. there's a giant finger. Where are we going to point it? A little bit, yeah, a did, little bit. Did, and I, I think there's always, you know, given the fact that the driver has the most amount of decisions to make come race time with passing and restarts and nailing pit stops, getting into your pit box well, getting out of it, you know, all pit out, just you name it. Like there's so many different things. The driver has the most amount of things that could be their fault. I would say that generally before the race, it's probably a little bit more on the team, mm -hmm. um, you know, preparing the car and then, of course, working on it, engineering it and making sure the changes are good and um, getting the balance right for race day and anticipating the, the weather conditions and, you know, how that will affect the car aerodynamically. So um, those, those decisions become theirs, but then in the race, you know, the driver has a little bit more weight on the shoulders. What would you have to do? in the pit crew to get fired um, like how many times can you screw up so that guy short fuels you right well you're probably not going to get fired till after the race but actually that's not true there are there are times where um pit crews let's say somebody falls out of the race or sometimes it'll be the middle of the race i think i've seen this before with like jimmy johnson or something you know um they'll swap pit crews in the middle of the race and just be like you know what we need your pit crew you can take ours Really? Yeah. Just Wait, they switch with different drivers? Uh, different different guys changing the tires for the, for a different driver. doesn't matter. Tires are tires, so right? If you, so anytime I watch a race, if I see somebody run out of gas, the fuel guy's fired, if it's his fault. <laughs> probably not, but, um, <laughs> you know, it's probably a little like baseball. <laughs> yeah, you can, only, you can only give up so many home runs before you're going to go back down to the minors. Yeah, there's only so many strikes you get against yourself. All right, so you're you're going to retire after this race, and then you mentioned you have uh, you have your own line of wine. Is that how you say it? I have my own. Uh, own I have my own label. Booze. I make my own wine. I I make uh, jungle juice. No. Um, you a big drinker? I'm a big drinker. No. Slam a couple of bottles down before you get out there on the track. Just take the edge off. Yeah, loosen up. I can't imagine. <laughs> I don't even want to take like a Tylenol before I go out, let alone. <laughs> it seems just going around in that rental car. Who's kidding who? Glorified rental car. We just went around in like that. That would be, you know, you said you, we're going twice as fast as this, uh, you know. We're going half the speed of what I'm doing in the yeah. car. And there's some right on Yes, It seems like a, it's a pretty terrifying sport. Yeah. Probably don't want to be drunk. Yeah, I would think that. <laughs> I would think but that. yeah, I make wine. Um, so I bought a I bought a property in Napa Valley in 2009. Smart. And uh, just dirt, and then um, planted a vineyard. And oh, it wasn't a vineyard. You no, started from scratch. Started from scratch. How do you figure out how to do that? Uh, I had a lot of help from. Um, who was my friend at that point in time, um, a winemaker. Um, he is my winemaker um, now. So, um, you know, I met him at uh, – it really goes back to why I started it. You guys had it, a falling was, out or something? Did he not no, step no, on the no, grapes no, enough? No, 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 
yeah, he's still my winemaker. It's all good. <laughs> I met him back in 2006 on a vacation there, and um, he worked at Quintessa at that point only. And uh, he was, um, you know, he he was just happened to be there that day. It was during sort of the end of crush period, so it was November time. And it was a cool, nice, beautiful morning, and, you know, the valley's got a little bit of fog in it, and, you know, it's kind of you know, pulling back down into towards San Francisco into the bay. And, you know, I'm sitting there on this beautiful grassy knoll overlooking the vineyard, rose petals leading out to this place. Sounds like a romantic picnic. comedy. Oh, yeah. It's it's uh, it's not going to get real funny, though, unfortunately. It's going <laughs> to get more serious I'm enjoying and a the lot more of this expensive. High-pressure system moving so, in. Yeah, so um, I just stood there and I thought, man, this is just so cool. Like how – amazing would it be to have something like this someday and that I in my mind thought this would must what 50 million dollars I don't know what do I need to do this right. and I thought I don't have that kind of money yet and um and then I like I, that you said yet I, I really Always believe that I was like look I'm I'm I might have 50 million dollars someday to be able to do this but um but I I started slow so went back a couple of years later and looked at some properties and Aaron Pot is my winemaker's name. Aaron kind of helped pick it. Aaron Pot is your mm -hmm. winemaker. Yeah. So you might want to grow something else too. Um, it's legal, isn't it? Yeah. Is well, it on no, a state you have to, level? Have it's to have weird a on a state level. Okay. And then it. if too many people grow it in your state, then you have too much product, and then you can't ship it out because then it becomes a federal offense once you go across state lines. Why do you know so much about this? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really a pot smoker. I'll do it occasionally. Like when I'm not drinking, I'll, I just I just get bored being me, you know. So I'll, I just don't. I, I what I like about drinking is I feel like I earn getting buzzed. Where you know drinking whiskey, it's like you got to get it down. You know what I mean? Ugh, give me another one. Where you just feel like, like a man at the end. You're like I drank all that whiskey. To not feel even this that. Way. It's just like I, I feel like uh, like weed smoking. It's just like getting fucked up with like training wheels on it's like you don't have to work you just a couple of puffs especially now with the stuff that i mean i don't know what the old stuff was like because i never tried it till like uh my late 30s and um all it does it just puts me they take two puffs and then you just kind of like for two seconds I'm like ah oh, this is kind of cool and then i just fall asleep where booze um it's I don't a know. little bit of a slower process. You can kind of enjoy the growing, the 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 escalation of the buzz. To and I drunk. also know where it's going. I know okay. It's a little if, more if, controllable. If I have three of these, I know kind of where I'm going to be at. How fast I drink them. And it's not like you take one sip and that's one. It's the whole drink. You have many many sips of yes. enjoyment. You can have a whole conversation instead We're of on the like same page here. puff I puff love pass, this. and then all of a sudden you're like, well, wait. Yeah, you're seeing stuff now. Like it's it's too. And you just sit there. I remember from high school, basing out, right? Is that what it's called? I don't know what it's called. <laughs> I thought basing was smoking like coke. All I know is I got a buddy what? of mine. I don't know anything basing, about right? drugs. I've never done drugs. Yeah, no. I, you can tell. You can tell. You still got the glow. Look at me. I look like all, all cur a curmudgeon. I got a buddy of mine. He's like uh, he's a year older than me, and he actually kind of stopped smoking weed because he's just like, dude, I miss the old stuff. You know what I mean? You just sort of smoked it. You felt all right. He goes, now it's just like you take two hits, you're like tripping. And I think that's just because there's so many people growing it now, and they got to have theirs be like more, more intense and stronger than the next. Yeah, I don't, all I know is this: just a big thing with sativa. Somebody, ne somebody needs to make the Pinot Noir of weed. Then you know, oh, is that, oh, was that, is that something your, uh, a little lighter? Something you can sort of smoke all evening, maybe, or sporadically through the evening. Pinot Noir. Nice. It's a lighter red wine. You just sold the hell out of that to me. You know what? My <laughs> wife wants to go up there. So, like, what's the difference between, uh, is it Cabernet? Cabernet. Cabernet and Merlot. A Merlot. Well, you know who ruined Merlot you know was that guy who played pig vomit in, uh, in the Howard Stern movie. I can never remember people's names. Uh, I don't remember a fellow Tag named Tagliabue. He had the same name as the guy who ran a league. can't remember his name. But remember he said, remember, ah. he was in that movie. He's like, I am not drinking Merlot. Oh, Sideways. Yeah. I don't remember their names. I, uh, there's Paul Giovanni. Paul Giovanni, that. yeah. Okay. So everybody who didn't know shit about wine like me, I was thinking like, oh, Merlot's like this. That's yeah. like and drinking he's like, out I'm of not sun. drinking any fucking Merlot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So and for then Merlot went time, down. It literally affected sales of Merlot. And Pinot Noir went up. Pinot Noir went up. <laughs> what is your – you like a Pinot? I make a cab. I make a cab, and then we decided last year um, to use the cab to make a rosé. Um, which turned out amazing. 
Um, we sold out of that really fast. Um, so luckily we're going to be able to make more next year um, than we did this year. And um, then I have a Sauvignon Blanc coming out as well. That um, we pr I purchased grapes for that one from Knights Valley. So. And what is, uh, what's the name of your wine? Uh, it's a Latin word. So every time I oh, say it for Jesus. the first time, people are like, what? Um, but it's not that hard. It's, uh, the name of the wine is called Somnium, which means dream in Latin. Um, because I told you about my little dream about like having a owning a owning oh. a something like Quintessa someday, right? Something like it. I'd love to have a winery and I'd love to be able to do this whole experience and own it and make it and yeah, it was my dream. And so it's a Latin word for dream. So like insomnia or yeah, I get it. Yeah. Dream. You're making me want to buy a winery. Well, you can just pop by mine and, you know, we'll be it happy to great. ship to you whenever you like. Maybe I'll just do it in my backyard. I'll have a couple of bushes of grapes and I'll just make my own wine. I'll just you sit could. out there and I'll just podcast. I got to figure out how, I got to figure out a way where I don't have to go to the fucking airport every six days. There's got to be some me. kind of technology where you can see someone somewhere else. I know. And talk to them. I know, but you can't do that. Well, we couldn't have like ridden a, around like Indianapolis Motor Speedway at half race pace if you weren't here. So yeah. if you want the experiences and you want the connection, I appreciate you going the extra, wait. Mile? Then I didn't, that I didn't I'm send horrible at math. The, the, I don't know, the, the extra 1,200 miles. There you go. Oh, oh from L.A. Yeah, whatever. I, I took the red eye. I took the it red eye. It still counts. Those miles still count. What red other eyes are punishing. What oh, other sports? Do you sleep? What, on a? Uh, on a red eye? Can you sleep uh, on airplanes? Yeah, yeah, I can, I do. But you usually you want to get the window seat so you don't get that tap. You know, and you, like someone's got to go up and go to the bathroom. But I had the aisle seat. That'd but be me, by the way. The per oh, you, you got a weak bladder? I like. I just drink a lot of water. Speaking of, it's a great idea. You drink a lot of water, why? Because it's really good for you. Oh, okay. I wasn't challenging you. I was just oh, asking. Yeah. You got this way. I wasn't trying to pass you. I work out a lot, so I do oh, sweat do you? a lot. And then do you? You work out a lot? Is that what you do? <laughs> what else do you do? Um, I sweat in race cars, <laughs> and uh, you're just, not one of those. Just generally a sweaty person. You're not one of no, those I'm people not, that uh, you don't do that. Uh, what is that stupid thing? Where, Bikram yoga? No, the people where they got to run down the street so you know that they're working out. What do you call it? Uh, uh, not Fitbit. What do you call that shit? It's, it's a new kind of working out. Where you run down There's the street? There's usually like a garage door. They have it open and they're making all kinds of noise. And then CrossFit. They, CrossFit. I do that. Well, can you just, why do you got to Go run ahead. down? Why Judge. Do you, why Judge. do you got to run down the street? Well, because you need to accomplish your 400 meter run. That's part of your workout. Don't you? Don't, don't you just trying to run by people sitting down eating brunch to make them feel guilty? Because every time I sit down, I get it's a little not eggs, my fault gym, you Florentine. Feel guilty. Huh? If you had gotten done with your workout already and were at breakfast, you'd be thinking to yourself, "I've already done that." But instead, you're feeling guilty. Yeah, but I would want the person to know that you as they see, ran by me. It's a little self-reflection moment. You see somebody working out, and it reflects back to you that you're not. I think you're you blaming the victim. One of us is blaming the victim. One yeah. of us is being a jerk here right now, and I have too the much only of thing that makes to me think it's me. I feel guilty when I see somebody working out thinking to myself, I could do a two-a-day, right? I, I do two-a-days as often as I can, but I'm like, man, I wish I had more time to work out. What, do you, uh, what, is, your, what is your workout? CrossFit. Mostly, um, I do uh, what is CrossFit. CrossFit's I like mean, it's it's basically and jumping jacks. You know the the way that the classes are usually structured. They're an hour, and the beginning is some kind of a warm up, some kind of um, just shake it out, some kind of maybe a gymnastics <laughs> move. Um, you and there's get in pike position. I already sure. can't do this workout. Um, uh, then there's usually an Olympic lift that you work on. So. Deadlift, wait, wait, clean. Is that, is that where you got to like squat all the way down and push put it press, behind you? Push back squat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, I and understand you're a professional and then there's the driver, workout, so I get that. And then there's that. the actual workout part. And the workout is between, oh, geez, anywhere from like five or seven minutes to 25 minutes. That's pretty much what the workouts are in CrossFit. They usually range around the 12 to 15. Why would a regular person like me? Ever want to put that kind of weight up over my head, squatting down, blowing out my knees, and then trying to blast up? Like, what what is that going to do for me? As <laughs> don't you want to kind of like take well, it easy on your body? Well, I mean, you I mean, know, I get you. You're a professional that, athlete. I get you it. know um, you, uh, weights and um, impact on some level does actually strengthen your bones. Who like, said that? The people who make the weights. <laughs> Because you got to look to see where it comes from. Because like in my Absolutely. lifetime, eggs have been good for you, bad for you, and good then for good for you, bad for you. Yeah, so lethal I like cigarettes. I did you watch What the Health? 
No. God, I watched that, and I'm like, I'm just going to die tomorrow. Oh, yeah, as far as everything that's in our food, right? Oh, God. And they told you sugar wasn't bad in that one. They're like, no, eggs are like smoking, and, you know, sugar is just fine. I'm like, I'm so confused. Who is putting Uh, this shit out there that's confusing me? That's why you have to read both sides. There's no way sugar's good for you. No way sugar's good for you. eggs are bad for you, I would have died 10 years ago. I eat two eggs every morning. I love eggs. Yeah. They taste too good to be bad. What's Cinnabon And I feel good too good when I have animal meat, so I, I can't imagine how that's bad. It's a byproduct of the sun. If it's not made by the sun, you shouldn't eat it. I do stand by that. It sounds good to me. Yeah. I'd have to sit down and work that out. Like, I mean, an animal's a byproduct of the sun. They eat the grass that's grown by the sun. Vegetables you know what, you, made by the sun. Right. Fruits. Now, is Plastic your, made is by your us. Uh, you know, by the, for the most part, is your, uh, are your Cheerios made by the sun? I love Cheerios. Pretty but then, refined. But I put, uh, I put bananas on top of it, made by the sun. That's better. That's good. Maybe go for the whole banana and maybe some almond butter with it. Oh, boy. It just literally felt I, you I got it. So in we, my kitchen yesterday, critiquing yes. what I was. Oh, it's that I would you definitely You might want to add that. a little almond butter to that. <laughs> You pasty fat fuck. <laughs> so you're, you're not. You are pasty, but you're not. You're not the other oh, one. Oh, because I'm turning fifty next month. So I said at least I got. I gotta. I gotta get myself in good shape here. You look good. You look. You look like you're in shape. So don't. 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 You know what? You, don't, you don't, said don't you look yourself. good, and then you looked away. You went. You look good. You just sort of looked down. You no, don't. You don't I, have to I looked like, down, and I was like, "You look good." Yeah, I um, look, I, so good, I get on the airplane range. tomorrow with a bunch of people headed to New York to do media day for the Indy 500. You have to leave here and then come back? Yeah, yeah when, uh. Uh, well, actually, that was Monday night. Gosh, sorry. That was Monday night after practice. We, we went. And so there's food on the airplane. And so we're kind of like handing it out, you know, here, Why here, Why can't here. those lazy bastards come out here? I mean, football, right? they don't have to leave where the Super Bowl is. Right? Actually, every driver went. Uh, there, there were like one or two drivers in each location, but up, there was like thirty-four drivers out in America oh, it was, doing it was media. A pr- promo Sp- thing, spread it out. Because if you so, put it on TV, you know it's not going to leave the state here, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. You, you got to go where they're at. Uh, well, look, yeah, there was a lot of local TV done, I'm sure. Um, so anyway, uh, I get on. The, we get on the plane. We're handing the food out, and then they're handing out like the dressings and the bread rolls, and they're like, "Anyone want bread?" And I'm like, I look back, and I'm like. You know, there's absolutely nothing in that. The the nothing in that food that's going to help you. There's zero. It's like no nutrition. It's you nothing. You told the other drivers that? No, I told that. Well, there was. They weren't. There weren't any other drivers. Oh, okay. They were just. It was a few guys, few girls on the plane. It was just people from NASCAR or people from IndyCar, my people, whatever. So anyway, um, yeah. So it, anyway, I I told the girls that oh, getting I get their it. bread rolls. I was <laughs> like, there's nothing in that that's going to help you. Nothing is going to. So you were talking about coming into your kitchen and critiquing your yes, food and whatever get, else. Yeah. This is this is what I would do. So anyway, I told them I, I went on a long diatribe of all the things that I all my opinions and thoughts and feelings and. Well, they I gotta admit, and I, you know what? They didn't eat it. They didn't eat it. There you go. <laughs> yeah, but I bet when and you left, and we started talking about chia pudding, and somebody had it for breakfast the next day, and they were very excited. And I was like, "I'm so proud of you." What yes. is chia pudding? Well, it's chia seeds mixed with some kind of a of a milk of what, some what sort. What are chia so, seeds? So chia seeds are the little tiny little balls, and when they when they come in contact with the liquid, the outs they puff up almost like a chia pet, like a, like a chia pet, um, but like um, like a um, I'm trying to think Popcorn. tapioca kind of thing, where they uh, they get like a little gel membrane around the outside of the seed, and um, so it becomes more like pudding. I just felt like I was on the ten thousand dollar pyramid, and you give me all these clues, and I wasn't going to guess. Okay, this thing it, uh, it, it, it kind of makes itself bigger. <laughs> Pass. You just add. Is it a grain? Liquid, and it. No, uh, it's not a grain. It's that a sounds seed. absolutely disgusting. Chia pudding seeds. is gross. In Chia general. seeds. <laughs> I hate pudding. It's just like it's like it was going to be something, and it quit halfway before it got there it just feels like uh, it is kind of boring until you put stuff with it like fruits and you know granola and crunchy things i'm a whole i'm a big fan of the obviously my life is filled with just dualities of you know super stressful super relaxed like there's me meditating and then there's me going 235 miles an hour um and then, like food wise, I like sweet and salty combined, crunchy, creamy combined. Oh, I so, hate that. Yeah, you hate that. That's well, salt and the ice you cream. Would, you fucking would, drives me nuts. You know, the, I was in, I was telling this story the other day. You wouldn't in, want like a salted caramel ice cream. What's no. wrong with you? No, and I don't want like a candy Survey bar. Survey says who would want a salted ice cream? What salted caramel ice cream. Yeah, no. exactly. It's just because they like you. Well, no, you know what it is? It's because I'm going to give them salted ice cream, salted 
caramel it's, ice cream. It's part of it's that's like a generation gap thing. Like I went in to get a uh, an ice cream the other day. I was in San Francisco, and it's one of these artisan places. Oh sure, like pistachio goat cheese, whatever. Yeah, they had they had chocolate rose petal or something. I was like, yes. what happened to just chocolate? What what is that? There's no way they put rose petals in there. That's got yeah. some. Yeah, they do. They have rose water mist and all kinds of things. You can extract the oil from rose petals. It's very expensive, so I bet it was the most expensive one. So anyways, Did you pick it? I, no, I ordered mint chocolate chip. I go, do you just have mint chocolate chip? And they go, no, it's not in season. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's like you're, you're – It's not in season. Yeah, you're making so, ice cream here. Yeah. You're killing people. Anybody that's ever grown mint knows that that never dies. Oh, so it's always in season. Well, I it's just, a weed. It I might as well be I went over to Walgreens. And I'm pretty sure chocolate chips don't ever go – I don't even have a season there you other go. than all the time. See, I needed you there for the, or your knowledge. I need a little earpiece to say that to him. So I just went to Walgreens, and I walked in, and they had a pint of the mint stuff, and I, I just bought that. And I, the thing what killed me was I didn't want to eat the whole pint, but now I had to because I bought it, you know. And I was so taught like not to waste food? by my mama. Um, I, I'm with you. I don't like to waste food either. It was really killing me to leave food on the airplane last night, and I was like, maybe I'll – Eat the salad. Never mind. I'll just leave it. You just give it to the drug dogs as you walk out of the airport. That's what I do. Oh, I pet them. That's what I do. They still scare the shit out of me. I don't have any drugs on me, so I'm confident that I can go pet them. I don't either, but what if the dog's having a bad day? What if it was just a, it just, you know, it messed up? Then all of a sudden it starts staring at you, whatever the hell it does. Well, when it's really mad, it won't stare at you. Have you ever raced in Singapore? No. All right. I did a gig in Singapore. And that's where, like, they, you know, they put people to death all the time. I've oh. never been so terrified walking through customs. Like, I made sure I looked through my bag like a thousand. I don't, I don't even do drugs. But, like, you get, like, the death penalty over there. I think if you have, What's like, it, a uh, something abroad, like, where you get locked, locked up abroad? Yeah, that made me not want to travel. Seriously? Yeah. But people kept what doing such dumb shit. What things scare you the most? Shit. What do you get the most? What, what? The ocean. Really? Um, <clears throat> Is it the fish? Sharing my feelings. No. <laughs> the ocean. Um, Let's dive deeper. I would say, yeah, the ocean. The ocean is, is my number one fear. Falling overboard and just sitting there without a sharp object where I could just stab <laughs> myself in the neck before the sharks get there. And then kind of go under and bleed out real fast. Well, yeah, because I, I was sitting there looking at like... Salt would sting. At, at Hawaii. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, I don't think it would sting as much as a tiger shark. Because they come up and they take a bite out of you to see if you're edible. Because they're like, what the fuck kind of fish is that? And then they take a bite. I go, eh, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> kind of out here in the middle of nowhere. All right. I think I'll go back in for the second. And you're just sitting there and your head's above the water. You it takes can't three see. bites to know if you don't want to eat something. So it does. It, I can see what you're saying here. Yeah. No, it's just, it's absolutely. So you're uh, scared of, of, of sharks. I'm scared of sharks. I'm scared of that al aloneness of just being out there. So when you try, uh, so do you not like being alone, period? Like, are you one of those people that's no, always got to have a buddy around? No, I'm a total loner. I love being alone. I like drinking alone. That's cool. Yeah. Cool, I guess. No? <laughs> <laughs> I actually drink alone. You know what? I drank alone by myself after uh, qualifying. I had a good qualifying weekend, you know, come back. It's been seven years. I qualified seventh. Like, I was, was pretty good. That's so I great. go home, and everybody wanted to go out doing stuff, and I'm like, I just, you know, like, no, and... I tried to see if somebody wanted to go, and then they didn't text me back. So I was like, you know what? So I sat by myself and drank a glass of my own Somnium wine. Yeah. Cause I, and then I said to my parents afterwards, because I'm, I'm, I'm staying at my parents' house, so, uh, which <laughs> is just funny. Um, I said, uh, hey, I, uh, I, I took some of your wine, um, but I, I did one that I, I took one at least that I could replace for you. So oh, that's cool. I drank alone. I know, I know the feeling. Sometimes it's, it's just nice. relaxing. It's nice. It gets a little weird when you go to the second glass. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, you're kind of like, wait, what am I doing this for? <laughs> Start feeling like you're in Barfly. <laughs> um, my buddy uh, DeRosa was telling me that. He goes, I love drinking alone. He made, he, Joe DeRosa made it okay. So if he's listening, I want to thank him. But, uh, oh, getting back to my diet, I didn't, I didn't get to tell you. Uh, this guy, Dean Del Rey, uh, you should have seen him like, like maybe three years ago. He looked like he, he had been like the stereotypical, like a cop. That's what he looked like. Like he'd been, you know. Just sitting in a cruiser, eating bad food, tacos and donuts and all of that. And uh, he got diagnosed as having like the diabetes that you can get rid of, whatever type that is. And he just. A good one. Yeah. He went on like this. Like, he actually listened to the doctor. He read up on nutrition and uh, he lost all of this weight. He doesn't even look like the same person. He went from like, uh, like almost 200 pounds. And he's a little shorter than my, I am. I'm almost 5'10". 
Sometimes I lie. I lie on my driver's license because I'm five nine and three quarters. I got to bump it up, right? That's okay. I'm five one and a half, and I'd write that if I could. Yeah. What do you? So what do you say in your driver's five license? Two. I five one. I think it says. You I'd rather be if I'm going to be short. Might as well be real short. Go ahead. All so. right. I'll say five. So he looks better. He lost a bunch of weight. He looks amazing, and then <clears> now <throat> he's and? gotten a bunch of us comics on the diet. So what? Every morning, I basically I'll have like steel cut oats. And then a couple eggs over easy, which evidently are going to kill me. Then in between, I'll have like uh, Ezekiel yeah, toast, which okay. is the devil, the way it tastes. But you just put almond butter on it, <laughs> and that's all right. And then, uh, then kinda, quinoa. Uh, quinoa. Quinoa is the shit. Quinoa. Yeah, I say quinoa. 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 I also say nuclear. Quinoa. quinoa. I say the all mother the of grains. It has a lot of protein and fiber in it. It's actually a seed. It's not a grain. You want a five bucks? Because I bred it on. Let's look it up. Okay. What do you say? Look it, look it up. Tell me. I, I want to know. Because I look, think it's a seed. Um, in my diet, I am Isn't dairy free, a seed? grain I don't free, know what the gluten fuck free, bean, bean free. And so if this turns out to be a seed and not a grain. I don't know. Even though I'm it's called wrong. the mother of grains. Oh, it um, is? Yeah. Listen, once a podcast. Do you just want to give me the $5 no, now? Once a podcast, I, I make a complete ass of myself. And I think that this is going to be it. Okay. Well, we've got like six people in here. They can probably look up whether or not quinoa is a grain or a seed. What's the seed. verdict? It's a seed? Bam! Oh Five my God. bucks, Danica Patrick. Woo! I'll take that, that in any... crisp singles. Jeez. I swear to God. Somebody give me some milk here that I can drink for that victory. <laughs> wow. Um, look at that. No way. I just blew your mind. I wish you guys you could see the look on her face over. right I now. Proof. I love it. I need to see it. I love it. What the hell? Hey, the proof's in the pudding. That's a callback, sweetheart. Quinoa, seed or grain. Quinoa is a seed that harvested from the species of a plant called goosefoot. It's officially a seed and part of a part of a group of pseudo cereals, making it neither a grain, neither a cereal nor a grain, and more closely related to spinach and beets than to cereals or grains. Holy shit! There you go. I'm going to have. I'm going to have a mind blown. I'm back on the train. I mean, look. I think you need a glass of wine right now. Oh, my God, I do. I need a, <laughs> a glass of wine and some, you know, the Pinot Noir of marijuana, apparently. I got to be honest with you. I think this – I've been doing this podcast for uh, coming up on 11 years. I think this is the first time anybody's ever learned anything. <laughs> this is like a legendary – Moment. Um, I know you have. Uh, can, when before this airs, can you like lay in some triumphant music in the background and? and oh, there's make... there's no production quality. To this. <laughs> this is this is all this is. Well, listen. I know you have to get back to racing. I cannot even begin to tell you what an uh, uh, as far as like a fan of racing, like what a thrill that was. Every time we went down the straightaway and I saw whatever you call that thing where they show the, the leaders and all that, the tree there. I mean, this is uh, it's incredible. Thank you so much yeah. for doing that. I'm definitely going to get some of your wine. Can people, uh, you got a website where they can yeah. order it? Yeah, somniumwine.com. Yep. You got to spell it for my listeners. S-O-M-N-I-U-M. It's phonetic. It's just a weird word. Somnium. Okay. You really didn't spell it for them. You spe- In fact, you actually, on the front of the bottle, <laughs> on the front of the bottle, there is a, the, the, the breakdown, like syllable by syllable is, is underneath the word so that people can... I'm gonna, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna definitely gonna get some of that. And what should I go with? <clears throat> what what, should, what do you think? Get the pinot. It's cab. I'm, the no, cab? I don't make a pinot. Oh, no, I don't really like pinot, actually. Okay. <laughs> All mean, right. I'll get the fine, cab and I'll get the rosé because I love a rosé. Yeah, and don't and the Sauvignon Blanc. You know, round, round it all off. You've got you know, summer, spring, and fall and winter mm-hmm. covered. I'll drink them all by myself in my hotel room tonight. <laughs> all right, Danica <laughs> Patrick, everybody. Uh, about to retire, driving her last race. I'm so happy for you, you know, that you, you're, you're doing what you want to do. Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I got relaxed listening don't, to your don't, retirement Don't forget plan. hosting the ESPYs, and I'm scared. Oh, hosting the ESPYs. You told me all the keys to the kingdom for that one. Yeah, having never hosted an award show. You, you said make sure you drink before you go out there. Take but, a shot But of not something. for camera, for yourself. Yeah, take so, a shot of Jameson. So if I, if I fall or if I um, just completely lose my train of thought, um, basically if I end up saying boom goes the dynamite, it's yeah, because yeah. I'm drunk. There you go. Just relax, <laughs> smile, have a good time, make fun of yourself. If a joke bombs, make fun of the fact that it bombed. Just be be in the moment. You, you're going to be great. You're going to be great. Thank um, you. And at some point, I hope uh, me and my wife can get up. What is what is the name of the wine? I'm a booze guy. What uh, is the wine place? Somnium. My no, 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 oh. no. Napa Valley. Napa Valley. <laughs> That's where the wine is, everybody. 
All right, thank you for listening to the podcast. Hang in there. We've got a little uh, little music here, and then we'll have a half hour of greatest hits from a Thursday afternoon just before Friday, Monday morning podcast earlier in my life. So anyways, um, I go... I go to the airport and I'm taking the red eye, taking this 1055 flight non fucking stop because that's how I do it. All right. I'm on a good plane. Why would I want to get off it and switch and roll the dice and get on another one? You know, let's just fucking get there. When, it, when I drive up to San Francisco, I don't pull over and fucking uh, Burbank and then get, get into another car. We get it, Bill. All right. So I get on the fucking plane, right? I use my miles, bump myself up like a fancy person. You know, maybe maybe I invented the Cheesecake Factory, people are thinking. And then they see how I'm dressed and they go, oh, no. He didn't invent the Cheesecake Factory. Um, and I go to go to sit down in my seat and I go to set my bag down. I was going to set it down right in front of me. And the nice fella sitting next to me goes, why don't you stick it in the middle? There's room. And he moved his bag out of the way. I'm like, all right, this guy's a solid dude or whatever. And then all of a sudden the waitress comes by. A stewardess, whatever. She comes by. Um, flight attendant, whatever the fuck you're supposed to call him. She comes up and she, uh, can I get you a little drink? And I was like, yeah, can I get a, let me get a water, please. Ice or no ice? What? However you make it. Stop acting like it's a fucking martini. It's all right. Just give me a water with ice. Thank you. Um, and the, the guy next to me, he orders a doer's neat. No ice, no nothing. Just put it in there. So they bring our drinks, all right? And I'm really thirsty. So I start sucking mine down, and he just throws his back like it's nothing. Like fucking John Wayne, right before he's going to turn around and beat up three guys, three mustachioed guys in the 1930s, right? So um, I'm just sitting there, and everybody's getting on the flight, you know, and I'm looking around at the passengers, you know, I'm fucking doing whatever I'm doing and all of a sudden the guy next to me Mr. Dewars goes to me uh he goes excuse me he goes are you afraid to fly and I looked at him I was like what he goes are you afraid to fly and I go no no I'm not and he goes he goes all right but you know it's <clears throat> he goes it's okay you know if, it's okay to tell me if you're afraid to fly and it's immediately getting weird and I'm like, no, I'm not afraid to fly. And then I'm thinking in my head, wait, is he afraid to fly? And that's why he's drinking the way he just drank. And now he's hoping that I'm going to be afraid to fly. So he, you know, he just wants to open up. That's what I'm thinking. And I, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not afraid to fly. And he won't leave it alone. He goes, all right, because, you know, you're, you're, you're fidgeting. You're looking around at other passengers and I'm sitting there looking at it like, is this guy fucking serious? And I go, no. I go, I'm not afraid to fly. So now I'm like, fuck this guy. I'm not talking to this guy for the rest of the flight. This guy's weird, man. It's like a 30, just get paint the picture. He's like 32 year old, wiry, <clears throat> in shape, but like wiry white dude. He's got a scully cap on with fucking glasses. Um, <clears throat> you know. And, uh, he goes, uh, like, there's like a minute of silence and people are still getting on the plane. And then he goes, hey, sorry about that. Sorry, we, we just we just got off on the uh, wrong foot. He's like, my name's so-and-so. He goes, what's your name? And then I'm thinking in my head, like, what's my name? My name's Frank. I wanted to give him like a, but I just, some reason I just went, it's, it's Bill. And he goes, oh, hey, Bill. And he goes, nice to meet you. So we shake hands. And I'm just looking at, I don't have any poker face. I'm looking at the guy like, what the fuck is your problem? I'm not even trying to not, I'm not trying to be pleasant. I'm already done with this guy. So then the guy goes, oh, hey, Bill. He goes, why are you going to Indianapolis, Bill? Right? Like he's fucking interrogating me. And I, I'm like, is this guy fucking serious? And I start doing the math in my head going, wait, is this guy like an air marshal or something? And I'm like, no, he's not. He's fucking slamming booze over here. Fuck this guy. So I just go, I go, look, I don't, I don't have to answer your questions. <laughs> That's it. And I just look straight forward. <clears throat> he goes, okay, now I'm concerned. 
Okay? I am concerned. And I'm looking at him like, concerned about what? He goes, you're fidgeting. You're, you, you have issues with other passengers and blah, 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 blah. He starts painting like, like this, like he's been, I don't know what the fuck, like psychologically breaking me down. All right, so now at this, by this point, they've closed the fucking the door to the fuselage, and we're starting to taxi. And I just finally look at the guy, and I, and I go, I go, you know, I, I came up with the fight. At one point, I literally stick my hand out because he kept saying I was nervous, and I stick my hand right in front of his face, and I hold it level. Oh, that's what I did the first time, yeah. I, I hold it level. I go, I'm not nervous. And he goes, well, anybody can do that. And that's when I was like, fuck this guy. I'm not talking to the guy. Sorry, fuck this story up. Then, then, he, then he came back, got my name. Now he's going, why are you going to Indianapolis? And I finally look at him. I say, listen, pal, I'm drinking waters. You're drinking doers, okay? There's no issue over here. And then he goes, it wasn't doers. What she gave me wasn't doers. Really? What was it, some sort of spy juice? You fucking jerk off? This point, I want to punch him right through his fucking stupid wiry glasses, right? So he's going like, you look around hostile, and I said something that just ticked him off. I was just, yeah, dude, I go, I don't have to answer your questions, all right? Leave me alone. And then he goes, uh, he goes, he goes, he starts going like, okay, now I am really concerned right now. He goes, why are you going to Indianapolis? And I just look at him, you know what I start doing? I start doing like this Ryan Gosling. You know that little smirk, that fucking Mona Lisa smile he has as he smirks his way through all his fucking movies? I, do, I go full on Ryan Gosling. Now I'm not talking to this guy, and I just keep looking at him. And I give him that little half a smirk, and I just shake my head. That's my game now. That's, this is my game. It's like if you're going to be a dick right now with your fucking delusional authority, right? That you're going to like we're in fucking Guantanamo, and you're going to waterboard me. Huh? There's no water. There's no board. Go fuck yourself. Here's my smirk. And I'm just going to shake my head at you like you're a fucking pathetic human being. This is what I'm doing. All right. And this is the funny thing. I'm such a dick. All I have to say to the guy is I'm a comedian. I'm going to do a sold out show there. And that would make him back off. But I'm a dick. I'm like, fuck this guy. I want to see where this is going. So now he's all fucking amped up and he starts dropping F. You know, he's saying the F word. He's sitting there going, if you don't. He goes, if you don't fucking answer my question right fucking now, I am going to hit that call button. We're sitting there taxiing down the fucking, getting in the line. I'm going to fucking hit this fucking button if you blah, 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 blah. And I'm just fucking Mona Lisa smile, smirking, just shaking my head like you are a fucking retard, right? So now he's, he's saying the F word so much. The lady who's sitting in front of me, diagonally in front, right in front of him, turns around and looks at us. And now my heart's racing. I'm like, where's this going? This is going to be great. I am 100% fucking innocent. This guy's drunk. And I think he's going to hit that button. Oh, I got a feeling he's going to hit that button. What's going to happen, right? I want to see what the pilot looks like. Let's see where the fuck this is going, right? So he goes, if you don't fuck you, he starts, he starts bringing his hand up to the button going, I'm going to hit that button. You don't think I'll fucking do it? I'll hit that button. And I'm sitting there smirking at him, thinking in my head, go ahead, hit the fucking button. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens, right? So finally, now he wants to hit the button, and he can't fucking find it. And it's in, in defense of him, I couldn't find it either. I was looking up there. I half wanted to hit it myself. Then he finally, he finally finds it, and he hits it. Boom, right? And now I'm just like, holy shit, what's going to happen? And he's sitting there going, yeah, huh? You want to fucking play this game? You want to fucking play this game? And I'm surprised. I mean, it took like fucking like 30 seconds before a flight attendant the one who gave him the booze, which evidently wasn't booze, comes over. And at this point, we're like doing that shit where we're behind a plane. We're almost ready to take off. Like we're pulling up and then stopping, pulling up, then stopping as planes are taking off. So she goes, yeah, what's the problem over here? And he goes, uh, I'm not comfortable to fly with this guy. This guy, he's fidgeting. He's looking around at other fucking people, blah, 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 blah. blah. He's doing all this thing, right? And then the stewardess looks at me, and I'm just sitting there fucking, my little smirk, just shaking my head. And I'm just looking at this dude, just shaking my head like this guy's out of his fucking mind. I don't say a word. And this guy goes on and on and on about his fucking psycho babble about how I'm this security risk. So she goes, to, so she goes okay, um, any other passengers have you... Noticed anything? She's talking to everybody first class at this point. <laughs> Has anybody noticed anything odd about this guy? And the lady who was sitting right in front of the dude diagonally from me 
turns around. She goes, yeah, I've been listening to this guy berating this other passenger. She's on my side. And I haven't said a fucking word. This is great. And I'm just sitting there smirking. Then the stewardess looks at me and I shrug my shoulders like, I don't know what to tell you. So finally she said, sir, do you have anything to add to this? And I just said, I, look, I'm just a guy trying to go to Indianapolis. This guy over here, he starts slamming his doors. I kind of felt like a rat when I said that. I go, he's slamming his doors. Next thing you know, he's dropping the F-bomb to me. Then I'm thinking, oh, fuck. I just said bomb, right? Fortunately, nothing happens. So now another fucking, the male stewardess comes over, right? Now he's going like, what's going on? And the captain of the fucking, now at this point, we have pulled over and the plane has stopped. 250 people trying to get to Indianapolis and jerk off over here who can't hold this fucking alcohol who just watched a uh, person of interest every, every, I guess, evidently. I have no fucking idea. Now the plane has stopped. This fucking jerk off has stopped the plane. Interrogating a goddamn comedian like I'm in the fucking Taliban and like he works for the CIA, right? So now we're just sitting there. <laughs> And the captain is up front in the plane, like, saying to the stewardess, is going, basically relaying, do I really have to fucking come back there? This is the last flight of the night. Is there really a goddamn problem? And that was the vibe. And they finally said to the douche sitting next to me, are you going to be okay to fly with him? And at that point, it appeased his fucking ego that he was somehow in control. And he goes like, you know what? Okay, it's fine. It's fine. It, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. So they go, okay. So now the plane's going again. And now, we're, now we fucking come around, and he's sitting there, fucking, he's in my ear. And at this point, I am laughing. Like, the fucking laugh you hear me doing the podcast. That's what I'm doing. And he's sitting there going, oh, I, I, he goes, you know what? I'm glad. I'm glad you I, I hope you fucking do. I hope you fucking try something. I hope you fucking try something when we're up there. I really hope you fucking try something. And I am just fucking, like, gut-busting, laughing, shaking. Like, what are you going to fucking do to me? What are you going to do to me? Huh? Are you going to punch me in the face, you fucking wiry jackass? With your fucking glasses on? You know? That's a federal offense. You're going to go to jail if you do that or something. I don't know what, right? So I'm just sitting there fucking laughing at the guy going, I actually, at one point, I put my fucking little eye pillow thing on. You know, like I'm going to sleep. Oh, I had that out too when the stewardess was talking to me. I was like putting it on as this total mind fuck. Like, I, I don't know what this guy is. I'm just trying to go to Indianapolis. I'm going to sleep. And um, so I got I got my fucking eye thing on, right? As he's sitting there threatening me. Just I was going total passive aggressive. It's like, dude, I'm so not concerned with you. I'm literally putting a blindfold on. All right? So this fucking guy, he starts going. He goes, yeah. He goes, you think you fucking won this? You think you fucking won this? He goes, my, you know who my dad is? My dad, he started saying his dad's some major CEO in Indianapolis. Doesn't it sound like a fucking made-up story? I swear to God, this is all true. He goes, my, my dad is some, a major CEO in Indianapolis, and I will have you fucking arrested. And the lady turns around again. I will have you fucking arrested the second we get on the ground. I'm thinking, like, for what? For what? Sitting here, you fucking loser. Learn how to hold your alcohol. All right, And he starts describing the view that I'm going to have when I go to jail, like some fucking Law & Order episode. Oh, you're going to love it. You'll be able to see Lucas Oilfield and blah, 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 blah. And I'm just sitting there cracking up laughing. And then there's this pause, right? And I'm thinking, finally, he finally shut the fuck up. It's like a three, four-minute pause. He finally just gave up because I wasn't giving him anything. I was just laughing and shaking my head. I was being a dick to him. I was because I was enjoying it. And then there was like a three-minute pause, and then all of a sudden he just goes, Why are you going to Indianapolis, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> so we're like 20 minutes into the flight. And i got to be honest with you, my adrenaline was so going during all of that because I knew I didn't do anything wrong, but I thought we were literally going to go back and there was going to be fucking cops there. and Like if if... if if the fucking stewardess or the pilot asks me who I am and where I'm going, I'm going to tell them. I respect your authority. You're just some je I don't. You don't have any fucking authority. I don't have to answer your questions. It was, pro it was one of the most 
fun experiences I've ever had with another human being. Like when somebody thinks that they have power and you know they don't. And all they can do is try just keep bluffing and raising their voice and start cursing at you. And if you just start laughing at them, the look on their face is fucking priceless. So the last thing he said, he said, why are you going to Indianapolis, Bill? Right? And I fucking started howling, just fucking holding my stomach, shaking my head. And with my fucking eye pillow thing on, right? And... I know I'm going to get a ton of shit that I wear one of those. I, they're fucking underrated. Get the one at Brookstone where it's literally a pillow. I'm telling you. You can fall asleep 12 noon facing the sun. It's awesome. So anyways, like after he, he asked me, what, what, you know, where you going, Bill? It was like, it was like a 10-minute, like probably 10 minutes had gone by. And I can't fucking sleep because it's so funny to me. And I can't wait to tell the story to every comic I know. I can't wait to try it on stage to see if it's funny or whatever. Uh, So finally, I just like, ah, fuck it. Maybe I'll just get on my computer. And I bring up my eye pillow. And I like, I got to look at the guy because I know he's fucking staring at me, waiting for me to do something, right? So I lift it up. I get my fucking Mona Lisa smile going. And I look over at the guy. And dude, he is fucking passed out. (laughs) He looked like he got shot. He was sitting there like his head was just hanging straight down. And any time the plane moved, like his head was, I mean, he looked like he got knocked out. And for the rest of the fucking flight, old fucking, uh, oh, what's Matt Damon's character? Jack Ryan. Old fucking Jack Ryan over here is just, you know, the sky marshal. The fucking booze bag and God knows what else he was on. He was just completely out, passed out. For the rest of the fucking flight. And this is how much a dick I am. I was having so much fun with this guy. I start, I can't sleep. So I start slamming waters. Because I want to have to get up and take a piss just to see if this guy's going to freak out. Because this security risk is getting up. And this, the joke was on me. He never regained consciousness. And then I really had to take a piss. But I'm such a stubborn fuck. I was holding it because I wanted to make sure he was awake when I got up. Because I was going to give him a little smirk, and then I was going to get out to (laughs) see if he hit the call button again. Um, But he didn't. He didn't wake up till we we hit the ground. And and then it's funny. Then he woke up, and it was like four hours later. So now he had kind of slept off whatever the fuck this guy was on. And I'm sitting there smirking, waiting for the guy to start talking to me. He won't look at me. And I I think at that point, he kind of fucking realized that maybe he got a little... uh, a little extra, a little too patriotic. So we stop. We stop at the gate and everything, and we're going to get up. So I grab my shit. I get up, and I'm just kind of looking at him, and he won't look at me. And then the lady who was sitting in front of me had this big smile on her face. She goes, "How you?" She goes, "How you doing?" And I went, "Good." I go, "That." I go, "That was an interesting one." And I said it really loud so the guy heard, and he didn't say anything. And t- this is what he did to try to save face. His pillow was kind of stuck behind was kind of stuck behind his shoulder in like a weird place. So he was frustrated with it. So he he ripped it out from behind him and kind of threw it down on the floor and went, Ugh. like <laughs> try to do some caveman grunt to try to still have some sort of uh I don't know what. So So that was my flight to Indianapolis, people. Um you know what? How how far into the fucking podcast are we? That was a long that was a long fucking story. 